Hey, welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're going to do is kind of take a look at the perpetual licensing across the platforms of photo software that we have available to us. And the reason I'm making this video is not necessarily to get you to purchase any one product, but really just to share that on one is probably more affordable than people keep making it out to be. They keep, I keep getting messages that say that on one is overpriced and I'm not seeing that at least from my own personal experience. Um, and from what I understand now, the model that we're going to be looking at today is for someone who's coming in new to on one, because those are the top prices that you would be picking up. So if you're new to photography, then this video is perfect for you. And if you already own some of these products, then just know that the upgrade pricing, uh, that's something you'll have to go look into. I'm not going to display that here. But just know that the upgrade pricing is usually going to be less expensive than the perpetual license first time purchase that I am showing here in today's content. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer. But actually, before we do that, if you want to save a little bit of money, if by the end of this video, you're like, you know what, I want to pick up on one photo raw. Well, consider using my coupon code FreeWillPhotos20. It's going to save you a little bit of money at checkout. And I do get a small commission whenever you use that. I greatly thank you for using it. If that's something that you choose to do, uh, it really does help this channel continue to grow and allows me to create more content and things of that sort as I continue to grow. So here we go. So the very first thing right off the top is the price. All right. We're just going to talk about dollar bills right off the bat, because I think that's what most people are concerned with. And that's very fair. But here's the deal. The price is the price. All right. You don't go to the grocery store and try to negotiate the price of milk. You just say, OK, either I'm going to get milk today or I'm not going to get milk based off of what the price is. You have to weigh what do you value this as? All right. And I can't tell you what you should value anything as and neither will I. However, what I will say just from a dollar perspective, on one is by far the least expensive lifetime license program. All right. It's it just is hands down. All right. Pound for pound champion in that category. Now, what the difference in pricing for on one this year, they're offering two versions of on one photo raw. There is the standard version is what I'm going to call it. And then there is the deluxe version. Now, the deluxe version allows you to use on one uh, modules as a plug in to your favorite third party software. Now, I only recommend this particular uh, section for two types of people. One, someone who's going to use on one as a plug in and two, Someone who is brand new to photography and you're looking for the most dynamic and uh, flexible piece of software that you can grow with over time. And essentially you pay, let's say that that rounds up to one hundred eighty five dollars. You pay that one time. You own it forever. You can go probably three versions of on one without ever upgrading and still be able to do so much like the program has a lot of stuff baked into it. I like to refer to on one as a photo editing suite, whereas other applications are photo editors and catalogs. Um, but what on one really has started to turn into is this full work station of photography. Uh, and I'll talk more about that a little bit later, but 179 is the most that you'll pay. That's for their top of the line, if you will, or at least the capability of getting plugins with it. Now, if you know for a fact, you have no need to ever use a plugin, then you can go over here to the $99 one or $100, have the program forever, and be able to edit inside of it forever, one-time payment, 
of $100. That's less than $10 a month for a single year if you're really, you know, trying to figure out how can I afford it, right? Now, contrast that with some of the competition. And again, I'm not fully biased. In fact, I actually have Luminar Neo. The only program I don't have is Capture One. And I use Luminar Neo fairly often. So I'm not against Luminar or Skyloom. I actually enjoy the software. But pound for pound, when it comes to standalone uh, photo editing, I will say on one has the edge, especially when we start talking about price. All right. I'm not going to even say the price for these other two, because I think that it's pretty self-explanatory. I beat that one into the ground. Let's jump down to updates. Now there is a difference between updates and upgrades, all right? Updates is for the current year version of the software. So for the version 2024, you will get 2024 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0 0.4, all that, right? All the way up until they stop making them. This year, I think on one released 2023 0.1, 0.3, and 0.5. Don't quote me on that. I can't quite remember, but those were all free. You didn't have to pay for them as long as you had either the subscription model, which we're not talking about, or you purchased the perpetual license either on an upgrade or you purchased a perpetual license one time. You got those. And now you're looking at the upgrade prices if you did purchase the perpetual license for 2023. Now you're really not even looking at these prices here. You're looking at a lower price in order to upgrade. Just food for thought. Luminar Neo does the same thing as far as future updates. You have to pay for an upgrade. An upgrade is to the next version. So when we go to 2025, you'll have to pay for that upgrade if you choose but the cool thing is with perpetual license, and this holds true for all three of these programs that I'm talking about here today. If you purchase a perpetual license, you have it forever and you, you never have to upgrade. So if the software is working just fine for you uh, in 2020 or 2029, right, then you're fine. You can keep on going and no one's going to say anything otherwise. Except for Capture One for some reason, and I don't know why this is. And if you use Capture One, please let me know. This is the one software I know just enough about, but I've never actually used it. Uh, they don't offer future up updates. I don't know what that is, if that's version updates or if that was just a typo on their website. I don't know. But if you own Capture One, let me know. Do you get updates incrementally throughout the year or is that something that you have to pay for? Uh, because that seems odd. It doesn't make sense, but it, it is on their website. You can go to their website and take a look at that. And uh, if I'm wrong, then, hey, I'm wrong. And that is what it is. All right. Plug in functionality. I touched on this just a little bit, but I will clarify. So let's talk about plugins for a second here. With the On One Photo Raw Max version, you can host it inside of Lightroom, Affinity Photo, Photoshop, and Apple Photos, which means that you can start your edit in one program and then go and do more stylistic things inside of On One and then send it back to that program. Now, the other way that you can use on one is you can use it as your base editor and then you can open third party plugins and host those inside of on one. I do this often with Boris effects and the Nick collection. I open up on one. I start my edit and then I host those other plugins to make more stylistic things where the max version allows you to use it as a plugin with third party applications. The standard version allows you to only do what we're doing right now. And what I use it for primarily is to host other applications when I'm creating. Now, Luminar Neo does not allow you to do that at all. 
and Capture One, it can host, but I don't really fully understand how that works. So uh, again, if you have experience with this, let me know in the comment section below. Let everybody else know in the comment section, like, hey, this is how that particular feature works inside of Capture One. I think it'll be helpful. But if you got questions about the plugin functionality, uh, leave that in the comment section. And if it's you know enough, um, I guess, conversation or confusion, then I will make a separate video talking about that. Let's jump over to computer activations. I think this one is pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. The max version, you get three. If you caught my earlier video, the chart said five. That was a typo. My bad. I misspoke even, I think. Uh, you get three, okay? You get three computer activations. And yes, you can log out of on one on one computer and then go to another computer. So let's say you got five computers. Well, you only sitting at one. So maybe just log out of one and log in on the other one, whatever it may be. And I think this also covers two mobile devices. So if you're using uh, on one on your cell phone, a computer and a tablet, well, then there's your three activations. However, if you are like me, I primarily only use two computers, my primary station and my laptop, then three is going to be well within the uh, ballpark there. And then, of course, if you have no need for that, like maybe you're just editing on one single computer and maybe a mobile device. Well, two activations is going to get you squared away. You'll be good to go. All right. Whereas with Luminar, you get one activation. And I think that that's kind of fair, but you get one activation. And if you want to log into it on another computer, you just got to log out and uh, it, it all works out. I think it, it'll be fine. Just know that you get one activation there. Uh, and then in all of my research, all I could really find is that you get at least one activation with Capture One. Again, least known program uh, in my photo editing repertoire, if that's how you say that word. I don't know. Let me know if I said that right in the comment section or not. But there's computer activations for you. If you get more than one computer activation, somebody knows, then just drop that in the comment section. So then we move into cloud storage. Now, there's only one option when it comes to cloud storage, and that's the max version. If this is something you want, then you know you want it. And on one has you covered as long as you go with the max version. But that's also only for the first year. If you want the cloud storage, my recommendation is not to look at a perpetual license uh, or look at a different option for cloud storage and then just open your images into on one. I think that that will be a better way forward in the long run. Uh, but just know that if you do want that, you got to go with the max version because none of these other ones offer cloud. Uh, with the exception of Capture One, there is some uh, cloud sync thing that they're it's free for now, but they're talking about it's going to become a paid service, which then that becomes a subscription. And it just got a little not confusing, but just more challenging to offer in a video like this. So if that is something you're interested in, then maybe go check out the Capture One webpage and see if that's something you're interested in. But just know you, you're still paying $300, which that's, in my opinion, quite high. So now let's get to the features because I think that this is where uh, these particular programs they start to separate themselves. And that's when when I was talking earlier, I was saying that on one photo raw has become like this photo editing suite. And the reason for that is if you look at all of these and these are both of these columns are just uh, duplicated, but you have resizing tools in on one. You have noise reduction. Uh, you have tack sharp AI, which um, I don't use that as frequently, but it's there. Um, you have keyword AI, which is extremely helpful when it comes to cataloging. Uh, I've used this quite a few times. 
Uh, and it also helps with searching for your images, even if the keyword itself has not been associated with the image. This keyword AI is a super powerful uh, tool, and I don't think it gets as much credit as it should. Uh, then there's also all of the AI masking. Um, with the 2024 version, we're getting Brilliance AI, which that is a whole nother thing. Uh, check either somewhere up here or in the description box, I'll have a link to my Brilliance AI video and um, my initial thoughts. But you can also go to the On One website and check that out if you're curious. But essentially, this is like auto AI editing for you, but you have complete control after it has made its modifications, you can go in and tailor that to whatever you want it to be. So you get your own unique creative style. But this is just uh, doing it for you. And to be completely fair, if this is something that can be trained, uh, I, I like this right now. But and, you know, this is just me uh, putting on my projection cap. But if this Brilliance AI can be trained in your own photo editing uh, genre or style or technique or whatever you want to call it, what may end up happening is Brilliance AI, you'll be able to set your own custom uh, editing preferences. So if you are a batch photographer, like I photograph events, I know that there's a certain way that I edit photos. If the computer can just edit the hundreds of photos, if not thousands in some cases, uh, for me at a click of a button, and then I just walk away for an hour and I come back and all of those photos are edited, that is just a time saver. Now, that's not what's in this particular software. That's just me uh, hoping that in the future, you know, two, maybe three releases down the line that gets added, uh, similar to the Imogen AI or Imagine AI. I don't know how they really say that, uh, where you can upload a Lightroom catalog and it edits all of the photos for you and then puts it back into the catalog. So when you open it in Lightroom, all your edits are done. Uh, I use that for a wedding and I was able to turn photos uh, for that particular uh, photo or for that client in about four days where that's kind of unheard of in the uh, in the wedding space. And, you know, yeah, anyway, that's just me dreaming. But you also have portrait and sky swap AI, and then you can include custom brushes or upload custom brushes just like you could with Photoshop. So, again, on one photo raw is like this entire photo editing suite. Now let's look at Luminar Neo. Now I love using the features that Luminar has. Uh, the enhance AI is like one of my favorite features that Luminar offers. Um, especially when I'm working in macro photography, I find that that works the best. And when I combine this with my editing style and on one, I just feel like I, I get a good, uh, a good balance of what I'm trying to do. But Luminar also comes with Relight AI, Sky Swap AI or Sky AI, which again, you're going to start seeing some similarities here, right? Portrait background uh, blur, which this works fairly well. Um, and then you got skin AI, AI masking, where the software starts to pick up uh, subjects across or areas across the photo. Um, and in my experience, AI masking has been almost like a 65% success rate. I don't know if it's because I just don't know what I'm doing or if AI masking is more hype than it is uh, actual practical use. But there are some scenarios where I was able to use AI masks and they work out quite well. But I digress on that. Um, you get composition AI, which gets a it does some interesting things. 
Sometimes it chooses the right areas to compose, and sometimes it doesn't choose the right areas to compose. Uh, I, I don't really care so much. I don't use that tool, but it's there. Uh, now, what is cool is Studio Light. And inside of Boris Effects, I can do some of what Studio Light does. But what's cool about this is it uses AI spatial recognition to find the subject. Now, this really only works on portraits. And when you want to, want to add a lighting effect over your image, this is a really cool tool that you can use. And, you know, you got to pay a premium for it to get access to it. But this does come as one of the things inside of Luminar Neo. Um, what I'm not talking about here are the extensions, right? I highlighted those in yellow because they do have extensions. One of those is the panorama extension. They have a focus stacking extension. They have a pretty unique HDR extension, but all of those cost extra money. They even have a background removal extension. Um, you can go over to the Skyloom website and see what those extensions uh, cost, but those are extra charges on top of the base price. Everything that I'm talking about over here with on one, it comes with on one. And depending on when you're watching this video or if you make a decision to pick up on one, you'll even be able to get some uh, presets and other creative extras. So, you know, just something to think about. Now, Capture One Again, the most expensive on the list, uh, you know, unless you count the regular price of Luminar Neo if they're not on sale. But I've never not seen Luminar on sale. Uh, some of the features that you're getting are tether capability, which I know that on one has the capability to tether. In my experience, it was a little finicky. Um, maybe that was me. Maybe that was the software. But just being real. Uh, that was a challenge that I ran into. So I just stopped using it. And, you know, I, I came up with a different system of showing, uh, my photos for those situations. But, um, then there's also capture one live sessions. Now I don't fully understand these live sessions, but like I said before, there's that cloud thing that they're offering. And that is what these live sessions are really going to drive for or be driven to, uh, from what I understand, where you start a live session and someone that's not in the same room can look at what you photographed. So think of your studio is in L.A., and the client that you are photographing for is in Colorado. Well, over this live online session, they can literally just watch as you upload photos and make comments and do all that. So it sounds really cool, but it also sounds like someone who knows what they need, then they know that they need that. And that's definitely a more niche type of feature, if you will. Uh, speed editing, um, that's what they have on their website. I can't quite remember what that was. Again, not very familiar with Capture One. Uh, not hating on the software. Again, I just don't use it, so I don't fully understand all of these things. Uh, I have heard that their color editor is phenomenal. Um, and for the longest time, if you shoot Fujifilm or if you shot Fujifilm, uh, I've heard that if you had the X-Trans sensor, uh, which is just the way that the RGB pattern and pixels are aligned on the sensor, uh, really technical stuff. But I've heard that Capture One would render those better and you had the color editor. So a lot of Fuji uh, users, they really gravitated towards Capture One. Because I never shot Fuji or owned a Fuji, I never really had that draw to capture one other than the tethering capability um, because I did shoot and I still do shoot a lot of headshots tethered. So just food for thought uh, on that. Um, then we have advanced color, or I'm sorry, customizable workspaces, which 
I think is kind of cool. I wish that we had customizable workspaces inside of on one. Um, but I'm also okay with not having customized workspaces. Like I could completely do without seeing the sky module or sky swap AI module. Uh, in my photography, I don't swap out skies. Um, so if I could just hide that and streamline my editing or move the local adjustments tab over to the next to the effects tab, because I don't really use portrait AI that much either. Um, it would just be nice to have things more streamlined right next to each other. That, in my opinion, that would be really cool if we could do a customizable workspace in that way. Um, I know that on one is starting to lean towards that in the 2024 version where you can hide certain icons to make your uh, browser interface look a little bit more uh, streamlined and simplified. But I'm talking about actual uh, like functionality and productivity. Uh, I would love to be able to move those around. And then the last one is auto dust remover. Um, dust spots, they get on your camera on one actually has a dust spot revealer. It doesn't automatically remove it for you. Um, and I think luminar may or may not have something that can compete with that. Don't quote me on it. I don't really do those types of retouches inside of luminar. So can't quite speak to if that is there or not. So I know I said a lot in this particular video, but hopefully you did find some value. If you did, smash the like button. In the comment section, let me know what your thoughts are on the Perpetual License products. My hope to you is that you continue to do your own research and make a choice, but Perpetual Licenses, I think, are a really great way, especially if this is just a hobby and you're thinking like, okay, well, I like photography, but I don't know if I want to pay that, you know, 10 to $20 a month every single month, but I never own the software. Uh, you definitely get to own the software with these options. So I really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this particular video. I love to hear what you guys got to say in the comment section about this. And until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.